So last night I had the harrowing experience of watching BS High on HBO Max. I can't remember the last time I've watched something and been so deeply upset by what I was seeing. For those who don't know, BS High is a documentary that's mostly about a man named Roy Johnson and this complex scam slash delusion that he ran that resulted in him creating a fake high school football team for him to manage and coach a very real group of young black boys with NFL college football dreams, many of which were too old to actually be playing in high school. He promised these boys the world and gave them absolutely nothing. In fact, he took from them. For many of them, he took their football dreams. One boy who was actually good enough to play college football lost a scholarship due to his involvement with the scandal. He took their innocence and for a few, he took their credit scores, allegedly taking out PPP loans in their names and putting leases in their names that he would eventually break all while putting them in harm's way, playing multiple games a week with no real trainers and poor equipment and trash coaching. I won't go over the full details, but football commentary YouTuber Flimlo Raps has two videos about the scandal and I'm pretty sure he's probably gonna release another one having watched the documentary and he thoroughly covers like all the details of what's happening. Or you could just watch the HBO documentary because you'll find most of the stuff there. And I'll just say, the level of cruelty and unabashed wickedness of this man at the center of this is not for the faint of heart. But like, he's a monster of a specific creation that I think is important to tease out. They do a good job of doing this in the documentary. Roy Johnson is a perfect example of the type of man who can only come into power by pantomiming this false presentation of masculinity and bravado that as a society, we imbue with authority, even when it's a person who very clearly well, not very clearly, let me be fair. Even when it's a person who, with a minimal amount of effort, you could see is full of shit. But when you watch him, he's eloquent and he's quick witted, even when he's lying through his teeth. As I was watching the documentary, I kept saying, man, this dude's behavior is weird, but it's also familiar. There's just something about it that I'm like, connecting with it, I don't understand why. And it's not till toward the end where he goes into a monologue that I'm like, this nigga's been watching Denzel Washington. Like, watch, <laughs> watch the, watch the documentary. He's clearly doing a low-key Denzel Washington impersonation. He's even from New York, I guess. I don't fucking know. Did I break a law? Is it illegal? Am I in jail? We're on ESPN. Win, lose, or draw, we win. And I want to be careful in talking about dude, for one, because it's really bigger than him, but also we have to be careful about the way we talk about, like, genuine mental illness. I don't know if Roy Johnson is a narcissist or a sociopath, but understand being a narcissist or sociopath doesn't make you do what he did here. Those types of mental conditions don't preclude this type of evil and indifference toward these boys. This is specifically a him problem. But either way, something is deeply wrong with this man. And I wanna give credit to the filmmakers for teasing that out, but to be honest, this was such a performance by him that they really didn't have to do much to make the film compelling. Like I know having interviewed people for videos, you want to get certain things out of them that you think will work for whatever, you know, idea or theme you have for a piece of content. And this dude, like he gave them everything. He probably, they say in the, the documentary that he probably loves that he's gonna be in the documentary and it shows the man put on a performance. But what made me get up and write the script for this video was the role Bomani Jones played in this. Again, shout out to the filmmakers. But Bomani cooked on this. And if you don't know Bomani, that's like his routine. He is easily the realest and most legit on cold black sports commentator out there in a world of Stephen A. Smith's or even worse, Jason Whitlock. It's good that Bomani Jones is there to represent uh, reasonably like a reasonably strong voice about sports and the issues of black people at the same time. Also a CAU alum, just want to point that out. And Bomani brings into focus something very powerful about the what's and the why's of how this incident happened. He says something along the lines of, people often say like, how could you do this to your own people? But the reality is you do this because it's your own people, because you know that doing it to these people, black people, is the only way you can possibly get away with it. 
And this line hit me like a ton of bricks as a black man because it spoke to so many intercommunal conflicts for black people and for black men and men in general and how we constantly have men rise to power and prominence among us who have little to no regard for their fellow man, their brothers, and in fact will exploit them all the way to the bank if possible. He was scamming vulnerable young boys who came to him in trust, who were given to him by their parents for pursuing a dream. Some of the boys least likely to be protected in any given system. These are the big black brutes meant to be beasts of burden, even in 2023. And thus this type of football outlet was ideal for them and also ideal to put them in a position to be exploited. I love football. I have another great football video on the way, but I hate, hate the structures that we've built around the sport at pretty much every level of competition. I talk about this in my Black Athletes video that you should definitely check out for a more detailed deep dive, but the short version is that there's value in athletics, but the means of production is literally the black bodies on the field. And at the same time, those black bodies on the field are the laborers. So they're the labor and the product at the same time, which puts them in a unique position for being exploited, especially when they're young, because they don't fully understand the dynamics around them and they don't understand how much their labor and product is worth. And we've set up a system that normalizes the idea that these young boys, even when they're in high school, are playing a violent game that will destroy their bodies into their old age and they're doing it for free for the sake of an opportunity. And they don't understand how much that is worth but the adults around them do, and there are so many adults around them that have no intention of doing right by them. Despite this, they called the thing explicitly a scam, and then said they couldn't do a damn thing about it. Bishop Sycamore does not happen if there wasn't an abundance of money in high school sports. Let's go! And that's one of the bigger things I really appreciate this documentary spelling out. Roy himself points out in unsettlingly remorseless terms that he's just a symptom. He basically gives like the Nino Brown speech from the end of New Jack City. He's a monster, but he's a monster that can only exist in a system built to exploit these boys. And it's only happening because these boys are so vulnerable due to their material conditions. And the only reason why he got in trouble is low key because he bit off more than he was supposed to chew. Everybody else gets to eat off these boys and exploit them the same way he did. He just was doing it too much for his stature. If he were the NCAA or the high school football coordinating body of Ohio, or whatever else, if he didn't go on ESPN, nothing would have happened to protect these boys. Because understand, Bishop Sycamore is not unique. There are probably hundreds of these schools across the country. Most just don't have someone as brazen as Roy Johnson at the helm. I have personally taught boys that have gotten caught up in similar programs just at a much lower visibility. I don't know if it's Afro-pessimism or black male studies or intersectional feminism that gets at this the best, but it is abundantly clear that patriarchy and racism combines in a way for black men that puts us in such a detrimental state that this type of harm can happen to us and it just be the price of doing business. Like these boys weren't vulnerable just because they were young and many of them were very disadvantaged. They were also vulnerable because they were groomed into a specific image of masculinity that they were then told to chase at any cost. It made the type of exploitation they were under in the moment seem normal or even noble from a particular standpoint. They submitted themselves to this ridiculous, awful men who they all say never was a good coach, never seemed to be responsible because they were trying to be men themselves. And this is the avenue set out for them to do that. There's one young man like later in the film who breaks down in tears as he collected what he went through and what he lost and how dark it got for him. And I felt bad for him in particular because one of the first things he did was apologize for crying and clarify through tears that he doesn't cry and he has never cried. And like you understand that that whole I don't cry, I've never cried mentality is low key the exact mentality that put him in the position he's in in the first place. Also, I've been on the other end of those tears. I've had D1 football prospects break down in private from the level of stress and anxiety and fear for what their talent might be able to do for them if they can make it through this crucible of exploitation. And that's what kills me because it's tears are low key for the loss of the opportunity to make it to the next level 
where he still would be sacrificing his body for a chance at being exploited by the NCAA or eventually the NFL. It crushed him to not be able to continue to be fodder for a system that uses him as fuel. And that's the paradox of performing masculinity right now in the moment under a white supremacist capitalist patriarchy. And understand, yes, it is exploitation all the way to the NFL and even in the NFL. It's nice that the NCAA has NIL deals and stuff like that now, but that only helps like the top percentage of players who are going to be stars anyway. If you know what's going on in the NFL with running backs, you understand that it's not all peaches and cream there either. I'm cooking something for September, October that goes deeper into that. But yeah, th this dude was the devil and he's a devil of our own creation. He's a product of unfair hierarchies built within the system we live in that looks at these boys, not as people, but as livestock. And if you have an athlete in your care, please, 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 like especially a little black boy, because that is where the focus of the exploitation goes toward. Please, please, please watch this documentary. Understand that all these dudes that are hovering around your son do not necessarily mean them any good and just protect them at all costs because having just dabbled in the world of like prep and high school athletics, the type of shit that's going on with these boys is abhorrent and nobody's paying attention and nobody cares and you got to take care of them on your own, protect your babies at all costs. <sighs> I'm FD Signifier and this has been Lightwork.